Now, we normally talk about financing and mortgages and everything to do with property. This time around, we're going to talk about the economy. We're going to talk about Brexit. We're going to talk about COVID and its handling. We're going to talk about the property market going uh, forward. We're going to talk about the economy going forward, the bigger picture. Um, and I'm going to talk about, you know, some of the things that I believe will have a major impact going forward uh, to government policy. Uh, let's get into politics. Everybody's staying away from this stuff. Um, I want to talk about it and I want to get your views. Now, what I will do is I will put uh, stamps in there, time stamps in the description. So if you're interested in a specific topic, for example, what's going to happen to the stamp duty changes next year, what I believe will happen, you can just click to it. If you don't want to hear my views on, I don't know, the economy or COVID or if you've had enough or you believe that, you know, COVID doesn't exist, then you can just skip it. But I hope you find this useful. Let me know what you think, guys. Comment, 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 comment. There is no vetting on the comments. You tell me what you think and it will get published and everybody else can see it. If you think I'm talking nonsense, let me know. Take care. All the best. Hi, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. So I thought for this week's session, we break things down and we'll literally just go through some of the main issues that's that's affecting everybody. Not about mortgages and not about HMOs and development finance and auction finance and things like that. Let's just talk about life. Um, we've got an opportunity right now. We've got a lot of people viewing and commenting on our videos. But what I want to know is what do the average people, not outside of my circle of friends, I suppose, and family, what do they think about what's happening? Okay. And, and you know, there is no... PR vetting here. Anybody who makes a comment, anybody that's, that, that says anything, their comment will not be vetted. You can say what you want, um, but I'm really interested to find out what you guys think about one about this coronavirus pandemic. Are we? Um, do you think we've coped well? I personally think it was an absolute nightmare. I think the way uh, we've handled it in the UK has been really appalling. Um, I think instead of doing what uh, I mean, if you look at pandemics, you look at the, 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 in the last, I don't know, 30, 40 years, um, the Asian countries, and I'm talking about the Far East countries, have had to deal with this, okay? They've been, you know, I remember 10 years ago, there's Chinese tourists walking around Heathrow um, with masks on, okay? So they were prepared for this, okay? And instead of looking towards the East and trying to learn about some of the some of the steps that they've taken to be able to manage society instead of looking towards the east i think we were very arrogant and we thought well we can do it better um, and it's turned out those countries have actually they've done a lot better and the countries that were um, more stringent they did they did the lockdowns for longer uh, and certainly they did it properly because i still think although although we did do a lockdown i think it was a very watered watered down lockdown um, and I think if we had gone harder for longer, but more organized, you know, the problem that we've, we've had is I believe um, that the, the government here has been at every stage has been uh, one step behind. And it's been almost trying to play catch up, kicking and screaming, really, um, to try to, you know, to put in measures in there, whether it's to do with, you know, the testing, um, and we'll get to that, but whether it's to do with the uh, economic packages that they've had to introduce, whether it's to do with, um, you know, the, 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 uh, the borders in terms of, you know, people coming in, getting measured, uh, tracking, whether it's to do with the app going wrong. I just think we've just been behind, behind on things. Now, that's a very easy thing to say as someone who's not within the government who doesn't know it, logistics so i know that and i appreciate that i mean uh, I know there, there are some valid reasons you can't just say look why were we you know why didn't we have testing trace right um, you know up and running why haven't we had, why wasn't testing up and running at the beginning of the pandemic i think you could say well why was it slow why was you know but at the end of the day you can't compare us with germany germany had a very sophisticated buyer uh, biochemical buyer by technic, I suppose, industry, okay? They had hundreds of labs set up. We're in the UK, you know, we didn't. We just don't, we didn't have that, you know? And we're not talking about banking or insurances or, or, or services. You know, we were, you know, the Germans had that part of the, uh, the economy so they could actually point to it and they could re, um, re redo it, really, to, to get it ready, repurpose it 
to get it ready for testing okay we didn't okay we had to almost build it so it's unfair to say look you know the government has done everything wrong i just think that uh, fundamentally the messaging has been wrong and you know i'm not having a pop at the nhs or or logistically the councils or what what you know i think overall um, the management of the crisis has been dealt with badly and I just think we've been um, we've been playing catch up and like many other countries don't get me wrong it's not you know there's there has been countries that have done very well and there were kind of you know you can point to New Zealand and say right they did the right thing however they may be able to because their economy is a lot smaller and they haven't got as much coming in and out whereas the UK is a multinational country multicultural country um, and it will be, it was harder to do, uh, you know, a full lockdown. But to be honest with you, we had to do a lockdown anyway. So, and now we will probably have to do a second lockdown. Um, and that's got its own effects and consequences. You've got, on top of that, you've got Brexit coming in, which is going to be a barrel of laughs where every, everybody, you know. Now, I've got friends on both sides of the aisle. Um, I personally voted um to remain in the uk however i've got very very good close friends of mine who voted to leave the uk um i think fundamentally uh, it comes down to um where you think you're going to be or the country is going to be not now but in 10 20 30 40 years time i think when you look at short term you know short term there could be a problem uh, short term there are there is going to be logistical issues definitely longer term there could be some very good advantages of staying out of um, staying out of Europe however um, at the moment in the next five years we are in a bit of a limbo because um, I, I believe that right now it's a very bad time to try to to try to get out of the country that then my friends will argue and say actually this is the best time because the Europeans are weak yes we're weak but the Europeans are weak and maybe you know that that hand that they had the strong economy you know with all of them I think you know in Europe there are obviously is a big gap between the more advanced economies of you know France and Germany you know, even Italy to the others uh, other economies that are sort of still still coming up and so there is an there is an opportunity there as long as we have friends outside of europe we can trade with because you know don't get me wrong we will have to trade with europe but however you know the emerging powers of the chinese you've got the indians you've got you know the brazilians you've got the BRICS countries you know all of those sort of things have to be um have to be thought out of and what my worry is looking at how the government managed the biggest crisis probably in our lifetime the covid situation how that was managed and how that was uh, dealt with i'm worried that they're going to use the same people and the same teams to deal with um uh, brexit and so far you know not much it seems to be happening um so yeah i'm, I'm i'll be interested to think uh, to to hear what you guys think about brexit how COVID's been dealt with? Am I being unfair? Am I being unfair on the government around the messaging and around the handling of, um, you know, I say essentially handling the economy? Now, don't get me wrong. The government has done some really good things um, to cope to try to deal with the economy. The the, cha the Chancellor Stamp Duty Initiative was really, really, really good and very helpful and instant uh, success. Um, I think that we're probably going to have to continue with that. I personally don't think that um, the stamp duty deadline is going to be, you know, it's going to be a cliff edge otherwise. I think they'll probably extend that, especially if there's another lockdown or a very hard, um, you know, uh, very hard lockdown, I suppose. Um, I think they will have to extend that. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I think that. One, solicitors are, unbelievably behind on things okay them them let alone lenders i mean lenders santander i think is on a 28 day backlog so if they send you a value if you send them a valuation you send them a piece of document on an application they'll look at it in 28 days okay i think it's like 27 28 days and they're not the only lender out there you know so you've got many many lenders that are two three four weeks behind okay so you you take that into account then you take into account that there is um the water boards so when you do the searches okay some of the searches when you buy a property you've got to do the property searches i'm being told 
that some of those searches are taking about 45 days to come back. Okay, so you've got a month wait to get your mortgage off, for just the mortgage looked at. Then you've got to go through the underwriting, they may have some questions, then what's this about, what's that on the bank statement? So another couple of weeks maybe on that, maybe one or two weeks haggling with that. So, you know, you're talking, call it a month, okay? Let's be generous and call it a month because it's going to be more than that. But let's call it a month. You've got a month with some lenders. Then you got your searches. Now, granted, you could be paying for the searches yourself, so you're not losing out on that days. And I think the solicitors are urging clients to pay their two, three hundred pounds up front and, and do the searches. But you've got the searches. Then you've got the legal work. Then they've got to, the solicitors have got to do all the searches, do all the legal work. Then have to deal with the lender's legal representatives or the lender's completion department to actually get a case completed. That's on one property. What happens if there's a chain of seven? What happens if you're buying and then somebody else is looking to sell and then buy another one? So I think there's going to be, there's a huge problem. I mean, I'm talking about some of the solicitor firms out there. I'm hearing I've got 30, 25, 30,000 cases going on. Okay, some of the big firms out there. And what's going to happen is one, solicitors are going to stop taking business and it's, we've already seen that i've seen a few articles they've stopped taking business okay two they're going to start putting their prices up uh, so there's only there's two ways you go out um, from a pr perspective uh, and lenders do this all the time okay there's a, there's two tricks really or either you come out and say we're not doing any business anymore okay so i'll give you an example um uh, one or two lenders in, during the lockdown to just say, look, we're, we're, we're stopping business. Okay, that's fine. But that will get headlines. Okay, that will get people, you know, if you're certainly, if you're trading, if you're on a stock market, that's the worst thing you want to be doing because, you know, that gets headlines out there. So what you'll find is the lenders that are very big, what they will do is they're clever. They'll, they'll manipulate products. So I'll give you an example. Halifax, part of Lloyd's Banking Group, a listed company. What they've done is they've said, right, we're getting too much business on a two-year deal on an 85%. So people that got 15% deposit, you know, because of they're good on affordability or they've got various criteria out there, a lot of people were going with a two-year Halifax 85% loan-to-value deal. What did they do about a month ago? They withdrew it. And they're only offering a three-year and a five-year deal. So that's basically, if you're looking at a two-year fixed, Halifax is not an option anymore. So that's taken quite a lot of um, business away without sounding it out to the market, without saying, hey, oh my God, Halifax is pulling out. Oh my God, did Halifax have government help in the past? Did Lloyds Bank Group, where they, did they get bailed out by the government? How could they be doing this? You know, you don't get all of that PR. All they've done is just, they've just taken the product out. And then they've said, right, yes, we do have a three-year product. So why don't you do that? So, and what they've done with that is, They've, they've said, right, we've got a three-year product. It's still competitive, but they lock you in for another year. Another year they can make money out of you. So clever messaging. And um, in terms of the solicitors, what they will do is they will probably just price themselves out. So if they could do a deal for £400, they'll go and say £700. Now, if you really want to take the business, fine, we'll take it. But it's going to cost you £700. And that's how they stem the tide of new business. OK, so uh, I think personally, I don't think the government is going to come and announce it now because the government needs buyers. OK, the government is trying to stimulate this market. OK, so they're not going to come out right now and say, um, no, uh, we will extend it. Because all of a sudden, all those people would say, do you know what, I'm not in a rush now. God, you know, I was rushing around because I thought I'd be losing it. The property prices were going up. Everybody's doing well. Well, if the government's going to extend it maybe by another six months or a year, then I can chill out. I don't need to buy right now. You know, if they want the asking price, I don't offer the asking price. Let's see what happens. I've got time on my side. Okay. So the government knows that. And I think, I really believe, I think we we'll might get an announcement maybe before the end of the, before the end of the year or uh, early sort of Jan, Feb, we'll probably get that. They want to give you, they don't want to give you too much time. They want those people to buy properties, to be committed to buying properties. Okay, if they come out to you now, I don't, I don't think that's a sensitive, uh, I don't think that's a sensible way for them to deal. So that's what I think. I don't know. Let me know what you think, guys. And obviously, like and subscribe as always, if you did find this useful. 
I will say, you know, I am going on a tangent here. It's a Sunday afternoon. Um, the kids are out, so I can actually, I've got some time to talk about things that I've been thinking about. So, yeah, let me know what you think about stamp duty. Let me know what you think about what's going to happen with COVID itself, uh, how the government has handled things. Brexit will be really, really useful as well. And, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a funny old world. I think... All right, let's talk about what, what's going to happen next year in terms of the economy. Um, I have done videos in the past where I thought, you know, the next year is going to be quite a tough year for us, certainly because of the furlough schemes. And I said on the video, you know, what happens when all of these schemes have gone? You know, what happens when businesses are closed, have not opened again? OK, so what happens if tenants stop paying their rent? Um, now, there are various initiatives the government's made, made in regards to tenants um, not being able to kick out tenants and things. Um, however, there are still huge questions to be answered. Okay, I actually believe um, the way the resilience of the economy in terms of people and the way you know the food program for the restaurants, you know, with the, the, the government helping out, that went well, really well. So there is a blueprint for the government to be able to. Um, they've now experimented a little bit of what works, what doesn't work, what's a cheaper way of getting the country to come out again. Um, so I think, you know, there is a blueprint there, but I still think, you know, there are, there are so many businesses. I mean, you're talking about offices. I mean, we've had an office um, empty now uh, at our business for six months, seven months since the pandemic. Yeah, we'll go and collect the pay. We'll go and collect the documents. We may scan documents from there. But, um, yeah, I mean, and so do lots and lots of businesses. So it'll be interesting to see what you guys think about how things have been handled. What do you think in terms of the economy? Do you think, I mean, again, I've got, I've got friends of mine that do multi-million pound, I mean, 23, 30 million pound plus transactions, deals for clients, okay? Very wealthy, ultra high end uh, properties. Now, they've got a different view to me. And one of them said, well, Pine, that's right, but you're not thinking about the government, how, how the government debt is, and in terms of interest rates and how low the government can actually borrow. Now, I didn't actually think about that, but we had a conversation, and he said to me, look, at the moment, it's so cheap for the UK government to borrow money, okay? What you're going to find is these initiatives are going to be taken, so we, we will write a check, we will print more money, um, we will borrow more money because, frankly, it's very cheap for us because of a, how mature our economy is and how how our economy is, is uh, works, um, the international market, and because of the credit rating and because of essentially credibility of the UK uh, government as a whole or the UK economy, um, we can borrow really cheaply. So, yes, even if we go through a... Um, you know another another dip even if COVID is around for another six months to a year we can borrow our way out of it okay because our interests are so cheap compared to the other countries okay so because my my theory is i don't think any government in the uk personally i don't think they will allow if they could i don't think they will allow the property market to go if the property market goes in the uk i think it's just going to because most people that's all they've got OK, we're not an advanced um, uh, economy in terms of, you know, your average Joe having lots of money in the stock market. OK, yes, we've got a, a, a very strong investment sort of background. However, it's different to America. You know, you go in a pub, you speak to somebody, they're talking about stocks. It's in their DNA. OK, we're not that. We are home buyers. OK, uh, and a nation of home buyers. So. I don't believe the government, I think the government would rather go and beg, borrow and steal. And most governments, believe it or not, do the all three. They will beg, they will borrow, but they will steal. I think there'll be a couple of wars just to pay for this stuff. However, what you will find is I don't think the government, the government will basically borrow its way through this. OK, so th there are a lot of people that say, look, oh, the property markets are going to go 30 percent down, 40 percent. down." I don't think the government would allow it frankly and and do you know why because just look at what they did six months well, two months ago with the stamp duty okay they've got a lot of cards to play around that there's, there's a lot of taxation they could loosen loosen up to get the economy moving 
okay? And yes, it's gonna be expensive, but I think they will take it on the chin for the property market to remain stable. There are gonna be aspects of the property market. There are always gonna be areas and there are always gonna be aspects, you know, if you've got lots and lots of office blocks in central London, I would be worried right now, okay? Or if you have got, uh, you, if you're uh, invested in lots of retail space, I would be worried right now. However, there are lots of rules, you know, there's pr permitted development rules, but the government, I think, one thing uh, I believe is, yes, we'll see a dip in the properties, but not that much because I don't believe the government will allow it. doesn't matter. And then I'm not talking about a Tory government. You know, we had Gordon Brown last time around when there was a crash. He literally came out and goes, I will ne not let the property market go. I'm not, I will do whatever I can. I'm not going to let that go. And to be fair, they didn't. They kept the interest rates low. All of those houses that were bought on self cert mortgages, a lot of those didn't get um, repossessed. A lot of those people did really well out of it. Okay, why? Because the government knew how important um, the property market is. Now, there is something to say that there are international pressures. If international pressures there, the markets, the money markets close up, we can't borrow as much as, as cheaply. Yes, the government's gonna be hamstrung. However, right now, the way it's going, the way our economy is compared to the other economies, yes, we've taken a hit, but we're still a very mature economy and, and, and uh, have always tried to pay our debts through. So I just think that's, that's the silver lining, I suppose, out of this video is, I believe, although you could be negative short term about the government, about COVID, about whatever it is, I think ultimately we are as a country in a pretty strong position um, uh, financially, we can uh, weather the storm. So let me know what you think. I might be talking nonsense. Um, as always, comments. And like I said, I don't filter any comments unless they're, you know, they're spam. Um, so do let me know what you think, guys. Really appreciate it. Hope you have a great um uh, saturday and sunday um and yeah i'll speak to you soon take care all the best the content of this video does not constitute giving advice it's purely for information purposes all cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker as a mortgage is secured against your home or property it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments niche advice is authorized and regulated by the financial conduct authority